this is Dr. Janet Bruno. Today I want to talk about the topic of multiple sclerosis, very specifically what causes multiple sclerosis. Now multiple sclerosis is a very serious autoimmune disorder which can become quite debilitating. It tends to manifest itself during the most productive years of a person's life, particularly between the ages of 20 and 50. And it generally begins with small symptoms that can mimic many other common disorders. And these include general weakness, some vision problems, difficulty maintaining balance, as well as some other vague neurologic symptoms. However, as it unfolds, it becomes clear that it's a serious disease process underway. Now, while multiple sclerosis is not as prevalent as a disease such as diabetes, it is important to know that it is serious. Nearly, actually half a million Americans have multiple sclerosis. And what's important to understand about multiple sclerosis, or as you may see it referred to as MS, is that the prognosis is quite poor. Doctors typically advise patients to expect to gradually lose the ability to walk around, ambulate, as well as see. It's commonly expected that 15 years after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, the patient would already be dependent on a wheelchair. And then further deterioration will be expected to happen until they are actually confined completely to bed. Now, because of the seriousness of the disorder, it's become the subject of many scientific studies, which, despite their numbers, has not resulted in any concrete or definitive conclusions with regard to what actually causes multiple sclerosis. Now, the inability of conventional medicine to provide explanations to patients and their families about why they actually came down with multiple sclerosis actually just contributes more to the agony and the pain that that individual is going through. So, really, despite the availability of relevant information, conventional medicine has taken the position that most people with MS are left to accept that modern medicine really does not understand why they came down with the order, with the disorder. So, in addition to that, modern medicine really can only provide a bleak prognosis. As I mentioned, the prognosis typically revolves around the prediction that around within 10 years of the diagnosis, more than 50% of the people diagnosed with MS will either be disabled or dead. It's a very poor prognosis. So interestingly, there was a time in the not too distant past that some researchers theorized that MS might be another one of what's called the disease of the affluence, since it affects people in rich countries such as the United States, Canada, and Northern Europe. However, when researchers looked further and they looked at countries where MS was extremely rare, they began to notice some conflicting information. It was seen that while many developing Asian countries had extremely low rates of MS, affluent countries such as Japan and Singapore likewise had similar low rates of MS. So this actually prompted them to reject the theory that MS was really a disease of affluence. But they needed to look further. What caused MS? So as researchers went over the investigation and the research once again, they realized that one factor which correlated very well with the rates of MS was the dietary component. Specifically, the countries which were further from the equator and where the population naturally had a diet that was higher in saturated foods because they relied on animals rather than agriculture, as well as other rich foods, those were exactly the places where there was the highest rate of MS. And it's clearly correlated as well with the low rates of MS in a rich nation such as Japan, which really is largely becoming pretty affluent. They tended to follow a diet which was generally lower in fat and lower in rich foods. Although we know this is changing, but historically that has been the case. So there's other theories out there about sunlight, which I talk about in another uh, video, but it's very important here to notice there's a strong dietary component. And more serious studies are currently being conducted 
to closely study the linkage between diet and multiple sclerosis. And it's interesting to note that many doctors who previously rejected the concept of diet as a factor in MS are now beginning to change their tune and they're beginning to express that perhaps there may be a slight chance that certain types of diet could actually be the cause of MS. Now there's pioneers such as Dr. Roy Swank and Dr. John McDougall are spearheading the efforts to treat multiple sclerosis based on the presumption that diet is a major factor. And very encouragingly, their work has consistently shown positive results. And as continued validation comes in from ongoing research, the day when MS can be reversed and prevented may not be too far off. Now I hope you enjoyed this little summary about the cause of MS. This is Dr. Janet Bruno wishing you a healthy and a happy day.